This is going to be a short, somewhat impromptu, uh, full game tutorial for Glitchless. Um, not a full game tutorial in the walrus sense, I'm not going to go over every strat in the game, and I, I know BBGN has his own tutorial, um, so this is really just going to try to fill in the gaps between that and, you know, a number of the trips, tricks and skips that have been found since then. Um, I'm just going to go through chapter by chapter, timestamps in description for each chapter, probably not for every trick because too lazy for that, but let's just start with prologue. Alright, uh, I don't think there's anything... Let me turn down the volume a bit. I don't think there's anything at the beginning of prologue that really matters. Uh, not really. It's only going to be the somewhat major stuff or things that I know haven't been covered, so I'm not going to go over all the little minutia. Um, this double boost here, I think we'll start with this. Um, when you're first approaching this wall, uh, you're going to do a wall boost here. And to get on top of this box like this, so you set up for the wall boost nice, you want to... Uh, not do an instant wall boost, just touch the wall for a second so you get a little bit more height and then jump off while putting your camera straight. Uh, you don't actually want to do a wall boost by looking into the wall because then you won't get enough height. You just want to land on top of the box. And uh, delaying it and looking straight will do that for you while also letting you keep all your speed. And then you want to run to the very end of the box. Run to the very end of this box and then do a hard wall boost like that, like a 45, 50 degree angle or so. And you want to do another one, even, you can even do a slightly harder wall boost once you get here to get the angle right. Um, you can overshoot this, so, you know, just do a little bit of trial and error and practice to make sure you're not too far at the end of the box, your angle isn't too um, acute into the wall. And uh, just do two instant boosts. And if you do it right, you're going to get pushed out because of the jank collision on the wall. And land on the left of this box here and roll. And it sets up really nice for this door. Because you're going to be just far enough away. You won't need to sidestep or anything. And you can just, like, open the door without getting the getting stuck in the door uh, open animation. So. Let's move on to this. I know a lot of people wonder about how to do this strat. And some people struggle with it. Um, you know, it's a little precise, but it's not that bad. Uh, so if you haven't watched my camera movement tutorial, I'm going to first ask you to do that, because it kind of covers the fundamentals of how to do these sorts of strats. Um, but you want to do two or three jumps. It's up to preference, really. Not sure how many I do. How many do I do? I do three jumps. I guess you want to do three jumps up these stairs. Uh, you could probably do four if you really wanted to, if you jump far enough back. Um, some people also do a boost on this left wall. I, I think that's unnecessary. I don't think it even saves time, but... Um, so you want to get to the very top of the stairs. Uh, you don't... Uh, there's really no benefit to jumping earlier, so you might as well get to the very top of the stairs so you have more height. And then you're going to want to look, like, basically parallel. Parallel is fine. You can also look slightly to the right, but parallel is just fine. And then you want to jump immediately after you get to the top of the stairs. And once you get past the wall, like right or right at the end of the wall, only then are you going to turn your camera to the right in midair. You don't turn your camera until after you've jumped and until after you've gotten to the edge of the wall. That will let you wall run past the end of the wall. And if you if you try to do like if you try to turn your camera like this, your wall run is going to end the second you get to the end of the wall. And that's not what you want. So, um, yeah, jump, turn camera. And then after you turn your camera, you're going to have a little bit of time, actually quite a bit of time, where you're going to be actionable at the end of the wall. And um, you're going to do a quick, uh, quick turn and jump. The quick turn jump can be like pretty immediate. You don't need to delay that for any reason. Um, but once you get onto this wall, once you started this wall climb, you want to do a Q-turn, but you want to wait a second. You need to wall climb very briefly on this wall to make sure that you're fully connected with it. If you try to Q-turn immediately, like you can with some wall climbs, you're going to like fall down and not get height. 
So, yeah. And then if you want to be safe, you can do a speed vault. But the whole point of this strat... See, right there, I just... I didn't let it uh, sit long enough, so I didn't get any height. The whole point of the strat is to get a coil at the top. And if you've done this right, and you've extended your wall run past the end of the wall, you're going to be far enough forward that you're going to be very close to this ledge. Um, and you can either hold left as you're looking this direction after the Q-turn jump to strafe onto this platform, or what I like to do is instead turn my camera this direction and hold forward. That way I'll strafe by looking forward uh, towards this wall, and that sets up nice for the sidestep afterwards, because you need to turn 90 degrees for the sidestep anyways. And then finally, to get into the vent, just like any other uh, method, you want to look slightly right as you approach it so you get a little bit more height. So, uh, I guess I'll do it all in one motion here. Just like that. And, uh, yeah. There you go. Now you know how to do it. Okay, what's next? What's next? Um, I don't think any of this is important. Oh, you know, there is a sliding wall climb here. I think I'm gonna not do IL strats. If you guys want to know about IL strats, let me know. Maybe I'll make a separate video for those. Just to not spend an eternity on this video. I'm not gonna do IL stuff. Uh, this strat right here... It's actually very easy to get over this fence efficiently. Um, you just want to be far enough to the right when you start doing these vaults. You just want to be, like, right here. And the reason for that is that there is this little thing on the ground here that gives you extra height. So you want to just be lined up with that when you start doing these vaults. And that will get you over. If you don't, then you're going to get... I think you get, like, stuck on this... Yeah, you get stuck on this when you try to vault over it. Um, but after you do the second vault, you can let go of W. And that will let you get a glide over it. It just happens automatically. There's no input on your part. And then after you get over the fence, you can hold W again and proceed along. Highly recommend. If you're, if you're even in any percent, you know, if you don't do um, gloss chain, then this is probably your next fastest option. So I would, I would recommend doing this. And then, I think that's it. I think that's the rest of it for prologue. So let's move on to chapter one. Just gonna go as quickly as possible here. All right, um, here, there's this strat. So I actually didn't make it because I didn't have enough speed. You need a lot of speed for this. And yeah, the only two things that matter for this are having a lot of speed and boosting as late as you can. Um, and I guess also starting the wall run early so you keep your height. But most of the time people fail it because they don't have enough speed or they just don't boost late enough. That's, that's pretty much the only thing that can cause you to fail. There is a better alternative though. I think this is like just as fast. Just do like a slight boost right here. And you'll be able to just wall run, jump over. It's like almost exactly as fast and considerably easier, so... That other way is probably outdated at this point. It might be fastest for ILs, I don't know. There's probably some like sliding wall climb nonsense you could do. Um... I would talk about this, but... I don't know, there's not much to say. It's also an IL strat, so... Let's see... What else? What else? I don't think this vault needs too much explanation. To get over this rail, just do a slightly delayed jump off the wall. That's all. Uh, and you'll keep your speed. To get this kick, which I like to do instead of landing on the rail, you just want to make sure that you're on the upper uh, ledge before you do the kick. And if you do it right, you're going to land on this plant here, which is pretty convenient. Alright. Chapter 1B. 
Don't know if there's anything in here, but we'll find out. Um, the look down strat. I'm actually not going to go over this. There's a lot of nuance to this, but just do the other thing. Just jump over their heads. Uh, okay, so we have this room coming up. This is a strat that I don't really recommend doing because of lag. The, the, I, I used to do this strat right here, but the lag timing is so inconvenient. And unlike in any percent, the lag... Well, I should say, just like any, any percent, it happens in a really inconvenient spot. But any percent skip saves so much time that you can afford to just stand still for a second and wait out the lag, and it's still worth it to do the skip. With Glitchless, this climb, sidestep stuff, it only saves like one second. So if you wait for the lag, you're going to be basically like... It's not going to be worth doing it. Um, but regardless, if you want to know how to do it, then uh, you want to start your wall run like right at the start of this sign. That's how I always do it. And you don't want to be looking too far to the left as you jump off the wall. If you do, you'll get stuck on this ledge. So you want to be looking a little bit to the right. Maybe I'll do it in slow motion. And then after you're jumping off this wall, you just gotta kind of flick your camera to the right. I didn't even have enough height there. You gotta let that wall run, or that wall climb, last as long as you can. But yeah, you, you literally just flick your camera to the right after the sidestep. I don't really have a visual cue or setup beyond that. The, the most important thing that I know a lot of people struggle with is the initial wall run. So just make sure you're wall running, starting your wall run right here and not looking too far left when you jump off the wall, otherwise you will not get any height. And that's about it for this section. Let's see, anything else? Oh, there's this boost. You can do this in any percent or glitchless. Um, hold on, I'm gonna let my, my uh, reaction time reset. Multiplayer mod has an audio bug with reaction time. Alright, so you can do this with any percent or glitchless, uh, boosting over this and getting a wall boost afterwards. The way you do this is you just look mostly straight after you get this boost. You don't want to be boosting at a hard angle, you want to be like almost completely parallel with this as you boost. So you can you can be looking in a little bit to the right as you do the boost initially, but then you gotta look straight so that you actually get the boost over the, the the vent. If you're looking too far to the right, you just won't it won't interact with the vent at all. And then after you get the boost and the the vault over the vent, you can look to the right again. Um, but a, another thing to note is that I'm really not even like pressing any keys as I approach this wall. I'm just jumping. And, um, that just makes you go, like, completely straight. You see, if I, if I turn my camera as I do it, as I'm approaching this white thing on the wall, um, it's gonna be much harder. You can get a faster boost, but it's, it's so much less consistent. Just, you know, approach at a straight angle like this. Don't press any directional keys other than forward, boost, and then look straight after you boost, and then finally turn your camera back to the right at the end. Um, and then you can also, if you do it, uh, you don't boost too hard, you can jump over this, which is nice, it's a little bit faster than vaulting, not very much, but something to note. Uh, this kick, you gotta really make sure you're like at a 45 degree angle and look slightly past the ledge. It's not that precise, though. You don't need to kick, like, frame perfectly or anything. So, you know, if you find yourself kicking like that just frequently, you know, and failing and dying because of that, just wait a little bit longer. It's no big deal if you mess up, either. 
like and go straight like this, you're just gonna land on the landing pad. It's better than dying. So, err on the side of being late when kicking here. Uh, to get this boost over the box, boost on this line right here. That will get you over. Of course, I didn't have any speed there, but... Let's see, anything else? There's a sliding wall climb here. Just look five degrees in towards the wall. Again, watch my camera movement guide for sliding wall climbs. Generally, there's nothing special about this sliding wall climb. And I think that's it for this section, so we will move on to the next checkpoint. Make sure not to clip this elevator. So, getting over the street here, not too much to talk about, you just gotta go fast. And you don't want to boost too hard on these two boosts. Oh, I got a double boost there, that can happen sometimes. You can also get a string. Um, but there's this little thing on the ground here. I don't know what this is. It's got some... Uh... Japanese text? Probably Japanese? I don't know. If you boost and you end up too far to the right here, you're gonna get hit by the helicopter. It might not kill you, but you are significantly more likely to die if you go too far right here. So use this as your visual reference. Try not to go too far right. You, you basically want to be at this thing or to the left of it. Um, otherwise, the helicopter is going to start shooting you. And then here, you don't get like a ledge pop-up or anything. So this sidestep is a bit tricky. Uh, well, I did there because I was moving very slowly. But if you're moving quickly, you won't get a ledge pop-up. You'll just like get a slow climb. So it's a bit tricky to time the sidestep at the top, but yeah. Boost here, you can get a double boost here off of this collision and then the slanted wall collision. And then the rest of this is exactly the same as any percent. Is everything loaded? I don't know what loads. There we go. Let's quit out. Everything here is the same. And then the sliding wall climb. Blues up ahead, kiddo. Let us One talk about this. Recommend being at max speed. So to be at max speed, you want to approach. And when I get to this corner here, do a sidestep. That will give you extra extra distance to make sure that you're at max speed. I'm not trying to cut any corners or anything. And you want to be almost completely parallel with this wall. You can look slightly to the right, but very close to parallel. Um, yeah, if you see on the bottom right, I have my angle, so I would consider like this to be like a pretty good angle. So this is like 92 and a half, so two and a half degrees or so to the right. Um, you want to jump not at the very end. If you jump at the very end of the wall, you either won't get the ledge pop up or you'll hit this ledge. Either one can happen, so you don't want to jump at the very end of the wall, slightly before that. So, once you get the ledge pop-up, um, or sorry, after you jump, you turn your camera right. Again, make sure you do not turn your camera until after you jump. So, um, you can see on the bottom right of my corner, you can see the edge of the building. That could be a decent visual cue. I don't actually use any visual cues for this, I've just done it so many times. But if you're looking for a visual cue, you can see, you know, when it's, when it's about to go off the edge of your screen, you know you gotta jump. Um, so, you know, find some visual cue that works for you. Uh, but again, jump, turn your camera right, 90 degrees, do it quickly as well. Uh, you also don't need to be very close to this wall. You can be, like, you know, farther away like this. And then after you get the ledge pop up, you're gonna wait as long as you can, and then do the sidestep. So, just gotta practice the hell out of it. Uh, and then at the end, you can do a Q-turn cancel to avoid the ledge grab animation. If you did a really, really late sidestep, you sometimes will get, like, a different animation here where you're, like, uh, Faith is, I don't know, scrambling up the ledge and you can't do a Q-turn cancel. That's fine. It's, like, almost as fast. Um, but yeah, 
to do a Q-turn cancel, uh, you just, like, hit quick turn, and then jump quickly afterwards, and then turn your camera to the side to get a, a speed vault. You can also do it with a coil, uh, by coiling and then holding W, and that will get you up over the ledge if you make sure to turn your camera towards the ledge. So yeah, if you so you, I, I don't know why I was turning to the right there. I guess it's something about the the way the ledge grab animation happens. But normally you turn to the left, and then you can sidestep onto this platform. You gotta like slightly delay your sidestep though to do that, like very slightly. You don't have very much room on this ledge, but otherwise, if you aren't comfortable with that, just do two sidesteps around the edge of that uh, potted plant thing. Alright, chapter two. Two A. Drake's got a location. Um, nothing really to talk about here. It's just canals. Just do a bunch of boosts and stuff. Um, yeah, nothing in two A. Let's just move on to two B. Okay. Fast storm drains descent. Um, I recommend to make this as consistent as possible. You can make this a little bit faster, but the most consistent method is to start off and make sure you have a good sidestep. And to do that, you just do the door kick, and then after you get through the door, do a sidestep, okay? And the position that I'm looking, I don't do any bunny hops and I don't turn my camera after I do the sidestep. I am looking, there's a orange line on the edge of the storm drain there, I'm looking at the very end of it. That's where I'm starting to run. So. No matter where I'm positioned, I pretty much always look right at the end of that. And my cue to jump here, and this is kind of important, so, so that you set up for the roll, is that there's this orange rail on my left. And when it goes off my screen, on the left, I jump. That is my visual cue. And there's going to be a lot of visual cues here, so... Uh, after I jump, I am going to start turning my camera left, and I'm going to turn and look at the left side of this yellow construction vehicle. Again, these these are all important uh, visual cues to use, because they all set up for the roll nicely. So if I do all that nicely and, and have all my cues down, it's going to look like that. I'm going to be, like, right here. You see I got quite a bit of distance falling down, and uh, my angle is really good as well. So, after I start falling, uh, after I should say, after I do the roll, I'm going to let go of all directional keys. I'm not going to be holding forward, back, or left or right. And I'm just going to fall. And on the wall in front of you, there are various lines. So this big line here, when I get to this big line, I am going to start holding W again. I'll start holding forward again. And then, when I get to this line right here, this first dark line um, beneath the big line, I am going to kick. So there's a pretty small window between pressing forward and kicking. You don't actually want to move forward very much, but you need to have a little bit of forward momentum so that you get a forward kick instead of a neutral kick. So that's what pressing forward before kicking does for you. So... Um, oh, Jesus. Let me go back and show you what that all looks like. They got you surrounded, Faith. Get yourself into the storm drain. Just like that. So, slow the video down if you have to and watch that back, but that was using all of those visual cues together. So I'm going to swing on this pole. And once I start swinging on this pole... You can still be holding uh, forward. Can I grab it, please? Thank you. So you're going to swing forward, and in that first swing forward, you want to get to the farthest point, like right here, when Faith has the most forward momentum. And when you're in the farthest point forward, you're going to drop off the pole. So once you drop off the pole, I'm going to immediately turn my camera left and start holding right. So... The whole, again, the whole point of this part is to get on the right side of this uh, pole that you're going to be falling to next. So, 
Again, uh, let me grab the pole. Okay, so I get to my furthest point forward. I drop off the pole. I look left 90 degrees, and I hold right. All in one motion, just like that. Let me do it again. All right, so you got that part. This is going to take a lot of practice. You got to get all this down in muscle memory because it's it's very hard if you have to like think about all of these things as you're doing them. Just, you know, got to get it down to muscle memory. So once I start falling, I'm going to be looking left and holding right. And I'm going to come across this yellow line on the wall, orange line, whatever it is. And that is my cue to turn left, start holding forward, and press kick. So, let's do all that. Just like that. So again, the first part was swing all the way forward, drop off, turn left, start holding right, and then when we get to the yellow part, we're going to turn... Uh, did I say turn right? I meant turn left, hold right. Turn left again 90 degrees, hold forward instead of right, and kick. And, yeah, then once you're on this, you can jump immediately. You don't need to wait for her to swing forward. You can just be, like, uh, pressing jump, spamming jump, uh, scroll wheel, macro, whatever you prefer. Um, and it's, it's actually ideal to jump immediately because you don't want height. You want to be as low on this pole as possible. And you don't need to kick. I usually do, but there's, there's no need. You won't die to these falls. Um... So then once you get onto this pole, you're going to hold shift, like uh, once you land on it, hold shift and left at the same time, so you fall off immediately. And then you are going to grab this pole, and then again you're going to hold shift so you fall off immediately. So that will look like this. Oh, sorry, I forgot an important point. On this last pole, uh, or between these two poles, when you hold shift to fall off this pole, you need to hold left. And you want to hold left until you're about halfway between the poles, and then look left and hold forward. And uh, if, you, if you don't, if you just hold left the whole way, you won't grab onto the pole. And if you turn left immediately and hold W, it's going to be really hard to angle yourself accurately to, to grab the pole. So. So my recommendation is shift, drop off the pole with that, hold left until you get halfway, and then turn your camera toward the pole, and press W. And that will let you grab the pole, because you'll have all the forward momentum from holding left, and uh, you hold shift and immediately drop off this pole, do a drop kick. Um, there are some other setups you can use to not need to do this drop kick, like if you were doing an IL, but they're much less consistent, so yeah, let's let's do all that in one motion. Just like that. Alright, hopefully I covered everything there. I know there's a lot of information there, a lot of setup, and, and you know, it's very choreographed. Um, I'll do the whole thing in one motion here. Um, I would say, so that's the full thing, I would say this is a pretty difficult skip to learn, but one of the nice things about it is that it's very muscle memory, so once you have it learned, you'll basically never miss this. So, yeah. Happy learning, it's, it's like one second slower than doing the out of bounds, so, highly recommend. And, um, yeah. I know people struggle with, um this climb as well. I've seen... I have failed it as well. Uh, there are two ways you can do this. You can either do a sidestep to grab the ledge and then do a Q-turn cancel, or you can do a sidestep and land on top of this light and then uh, do like a, a vault, I think, after that. They're both fine. It's really just down to preference. 
Um, I think the, the main part is the setup into those two climbs that's the most important. So you want to do a wall run, like, pretty late on this wall. If you notice, I'm jumping, like, kind of, like, right here. I don't know what this is, but there's some texture on the wall that I'm looking at here. That's kind of where I'm approaching. And then... You can look pretty much completely straight when you jump off the wall. I'm not really turning my camera to the left at all. If you turn your camera left, you're going to make it much harder for yourself to get this nice wall climb sidestep. You're going to be angled very far left and sort of risk not grabbing the ledge. However, if you do fail it, it's not that big of a deal. You just got to be calm and, and know what you're doing. If you want, you can just take the springboard. If you go immediately go to the springboard, you will still be able to get the checkpoint in time. Otherwise, a slightly faster thing you can do is jump on this ledge and get a ledge pop-up after climbing the uh, the wall here. So, whatever you prefer. I recommend, though, practicing not only this um, climb, but also practice a backup, just in case. Because it's a pretty big time loss if you do fail it. Alright. Not chapter 3, chapter 2. I know that was a long explanation, but hopefully it helps. 2C. This is one of those, another one of those newer skips found. Um, you can either go to the right here immediately, or you can cut through the pillars and take this route. Um, doesn't really matter which, I think it's slightly faster to go here, and then do a sidestep after you get this, uh, past this pillar. Jump, so you don't lose speed moving up the, the ledge, and then do this springboard. Um, this first springboard. I recommend springboarding and grabbing the pi uh, the pole very far left. There's no there's no reason really to, to do it farther to the right. You'll just make it harder for yourself. So, yeah. Um and then when I do this wall climb sidestep, um, I'm turning into the wall pretty much immediately after I jump, I think. Or perhaps I'm getting a little bit of height first. Oh yeah, sorry. You get the forward uh, height, forward momentum and height from, you know, swinging all the way forward on the pole first, then looking left immediately after jumping and doing a sidestep. So, you want to look left immediately, you don't need to sidestep immediately, but you do want to look left immediately um, and start the wall climb. And then after you do the sidestep right, you need to hold left. Otherwise, you're going to like veer off and, and not grab this ladder. So, again, that's this is what it looks like. You notice on the key display, I was holding left immediately after getting the... Um, getting the sidestep. So, this part here, I've seen a lot of people fail as well. I wish I had more technical information about how this ledge grab works, but I can tell you from my experience, something that always works for me is jumping and then immediately looking back forward, pretty much. I'm like snapping my camera uh, to look forward. And I don't get a vault. I get, like, I, I like stagger up onto the ledge. So, and you also want to be holding forward the whole time. Oops. Well, that was a bad example. Kind of ruining my credibility, huh? You taking in the ambience down there? Anything you Just a moment. To help you get up? I'm boosting your signal, but it won't last too long. Um, so there is like a height requirement. You don't need to be super far up on this ladder. I think I do typically, like, like start climbing one rung. I don't think I actually do a full climb before I jump off, but I think I start the climbing animation, and then I jump off. Maybe that's helpful, maybe that's the reason that I get it very consistently. I don't know. I'm no expert. But I do always get this, like, stagger up animation, so I guess I recommend, um, you know, starting to climb uh, and then 
jumping off slightly to the right. You don't need to look too far to the right when you jump off the ladder and then snapping my camera back left. Um, I think some people have also said that you can, like, do it immediately. I'll try to do it even faster. That just got me a ledge grab. I don't know. Yeah, it might work if you if you do it immediately. It's probably the case that you just need to be in the ladder animation, like either grabbing onto the ladder or climbing up the ladder. But if you're just like sitting on the ladder, maybe, you know, idle, perhaps that causes you to not uh, grab the ledge. Just guessing, but if you do what I always do, start climbing one rung and then jump off you should be able to make it up here again. Hold W the whole time after you grab onto the ladder. Anyways, that that I would say is probably the hardest part of this, making sure to, to learn that and get that down and you know internalize the muscle memory and whatnot. I'm a little bit out of practice right now, but uh, yeah, you sidestep here. These things also fall down, so hopefully you get it in one try. Uh, you can jump over this box, otherwise you can just take the springboard this is the same thing as the sliding wall climb after the previous swing, um, except you can do it earlier. You don't need to wait to get extra height or anything, but you still can. And then do a sliding wall climb and hold left after you do the sliding wall climb to air strafe to the left. So you don't go flying off the ledge or anything. Here, uh, these two little bars, or at least the right one, I think they're both not actually solid, despite what their collision would tell you. Um, so you don't need to be afraid about, like, y you can go pretty far right. Um, the way I do it is I jump onto this. Uh, let me land on it, please. After I land on this, you want to be looking, like, right here. Not far enough left that you're going to get, like, a backwards wall run or anything, but you want to be looking as early on the wall as possible, and I'm turning my camera left as I jump onto this rail. And you, once you get the wall run, you want to wall run for, I don't know, half the length of the wall or so, and then Q-turn jump. Um, I will practice this in the time trial so we can go over stuff. Where is it? Did I miss it? I think I missed it. Get out of here, ghost. Alright. That's what it looks like in one motion. Sort of need to wall run briefly before you uh, jump off. However, if you don't like doing this, you can also just line yourself up with this and do a slightly delayed quick turn jump so you get enough height and coil on. Otherwise, if you don't want to coil even, you can just not coil and you, you won't risk anything if you miss the ledge and then to get this sliding wall climb over this uh, pole it's not necessary or anything but I like to walk forward a little bit so that I'm you know parallel with the platform I'm going to be running on and then do a sidestep and uh, you don't want to do it you, you don't want to do it too fast actually but you do need to sidestep after you get past this green rail um, it's much harder to sidestep if you do it earlier. So. Yeah, there you go. Most of the time what will happen if you fail is you'll either grab this uh, pole. Sometimes you will, like, grab the ledge. If your angle is really bad, you might go flying off to the side, but that isn't usually how I fail. Yeah, right there, I just grabbed the ledge. But yeah, it's pretty fast. I, I'd say go for it. Be a Chad. Be the Chad you always knew you could be. Alright, here, springboard. You can go pretty far to the right. There's going to be a guard up here, but um, you can go much further to the right than you probably even think you can. And the guard won't hit you if you go far enough right. Uh, here, I don't really have a great visual cue for this. I just kind of look, I guess, slightly to the left of the pillar, the green pillar here. 
I know other people base it off of this checkpoint. So if you're in the time trial, I believe you like use the hint key and get the springboard that way. Obviously, if you're doing this in a full game run, you will not have access to that. Um, so, you know, perhaps learn this in the time trial and make a visual cue based on that. But yeah, I basically just look like right here. And sometimes I miss it. And then do a sidestep. You can do a wall boost on that wall. Sidestep into the uh, zip line. And then I usually tap left twice, and that lines up pretty nicely. If you aren't lined up perfectly, if you think you're going to hit the wall, you can go backwards and forwards a little bit while changing your camera angle to adjust very slightly. And then just yellow. Um, also, you, keep in mind you're not moving very fast here, so you can look slightly to the left and then air strafe back to the right. Because air strafing does work at low speeds, so I usually make use of that when I'm jumping around this corner. That was a little bit too much. Put a little much too, too much stank on that. But yeah. And I guess I might as well mention if you're in any percent, you should instead go to the left here, jump across these two pillars, and do a kick glitch. Yeah exactly like if you were coming from the other side, but with a right kick glitch instead. And this doesn't work, because I'm in a time trial. Let's move on. Uh, quit out. Quit out. Chapter 2. Checkpoint D. This is Hampton Town Access Point. Your exit Anything I want to note here? When you're doing this sliding wall climb, only be halfway, like left to right, only be halfway through this platform. If you're too far to the right or too far to the left, uh, it's not going to work. If you're too far to the right, you like won't latch onto the wall very long and you'll fall down like that. And if you're too far to the left, you're not going to be able to get a good angle. You'll probably boost and grab the ledge, but yeah, err on the side of being to the left, I guess. I don't know why I didn't grab that, but ignore that. Uh, if you want to do this strat, the springboard, it only saves about a second, but I recommend approaching the springboard from the left side. And when you're doing the springboard animation, there's this orange thing that sticks down off the wall. You want to make sure you're to the left of it. Otherwise, you're going to bonk your head. And then turn your camera abruptly left. Uh, I know some people let go of W to get a better speed vault. Like that, so you're like very much facing the direction you want to go. But it is a little bit riskier. It adds a little bit more timing to it. I prefer to just hold W the whole time and whip my camera to the left. That way you'll automatically speed vault. Uh, you won't set up as nicely for this next part, but it's not a big deal. And then uh, waterfall climb. I think there's already a tutorial out there for waterfall climb, so I'm going to skip this. I think BBGN has one, so watch that. Uh, let's see, chapter two, anything else? There is this wall run on the orange box here. It's pretty hard to do. It's very easy to mess this up, and it doesn't save very much time. I shouldn't say it's hard, but I, I do find that I mess it up frequently. The way I do it is I start the wall run immediately. On the, on the orange box, and you don't have very long to wall run, so you need to wall run, quickly turn, and sidestep. That's that's about all I got for it. Just, just don't do it. Chapter 2, Checkpoint, Chase. Let's see. To get this wall run on this on this wall, uh, this is not necessary. You can go to the left side, and it's just as fast. They're like almost identical in terms of speed. I just prefer to do it this way. You want to make sure you're at the very edge of the wall, or uh, sorry, very edge of the the platform you're standing on, and jump. And you only want to turn your camera uh, uh, when you're at the very end of this wall. I believe there's. I think you're trying to wall run on this collision. Like there's. 
you know, curved platforms here. I could be wrong, but I think that's what you're wall running on. And if you turn your camera too early, then you're gonna have a bad time. No, it's not the curved collision. I don't know. You just want to do it very late. And you will fall down here. Again, camera turn wall runs. Go watch that video. Uh, here, I want to make sure you are at the very edge of the wall, up on this lip, before you do the kick. Make it across to this platform. And here, you don't need to sidestep if you're afraid you're going to fall off, but you can sidestep, I usually do. And again, camera turn wall run, jump, and then turn your camera right to get a wall run kick across the barbed wire. And let's see, I will go into the time trial for this as well. Uh, to practice this sliding wall climb on this orange wall, you want to be up on this platform so that you get the speed from the zip line. That's where I would recommend making a checkpoint. If you want to make a checkpoint here, you know, do it after you get down from the zip line so you have the right amount of speed. Alright, and then once you're down here, you want to look at about a 45 degree angle, and you want to jump very early on this wall. And you want to be as far forward along the platform here, jump at the very edge of the platform, and uh, uh, touch the wall at the earliest point. And when you wall run, you'll notice there is a door on my left here. When the door starts going off screen, when it touches the bottom left of my screen, that's when I jump. So I'll show you what that looks like. Right there. That's when I jump. And this whole time, I am not turning my camera at all. At no point do I turn my camera once I've started this wall run. And you just jump. Jump straight. And this will be the camera angle that you'll have. And you are going to jump immediately when you touch the ground. You can just spam jump. And jump. Then turn your camera left. Or to get the sliding wall climb. And then do a right side step. And if you do everything exactly in that order you will get over the fence. And if you do it actually early enough, you'll get a damage boost from the fence and not have to roll. But that's not, you know, necessary or anything. Just yeah. like that. I didn't do it slight- I, I needed to do it slightly earlier and I would have gotten the damage boost, but... That one I did a little too early. It can be a little bit risky <laughs> to go for the damage boost, but if you get it, it's very fast, so... It's actually faster than doing a kick glitch on this wall and then a kick glitch on this wall. And I think it's almost, it's like exactly as fast as doing a kick glitch here and then a kick glitch here, I think. So, one of those nice strats you can learn for glitch list to also help you in any percent. Anyways, that is it for this checkpoint. can talk about the very end of the game, end of the level, rather. <laughs> Don't do a use glitch. It's cheating. Okay, here, there's gonna be some collision on your ground here, so the best thing to do is do a double sidestep so you have max speed. And you wanna jump, like, either right before you get up on this ledge or right after. It doesn't really matter. I typically jump, like, right before. If you jump right after, you get a little bit too much uh, distance, but it's not really a big deal. And then I'm jumping immediately on the first uh, pole, and I'm waiting until I get my upward trajectory from the second pole. So that way I can coil up onto this platform. Now, as long as you've maintained your speed from that coil, you just want to do a slow turn 
and use the whole platform to keep your speed and jump at the very end. If you didn't maintain your speed, you can do a sidestep, but it's a little bit more difficult to like uh, make sure you angle everything appropriately and don't lose your speed. Uh, but yeah, let's do one full run through. And then again, you can do a Q-turn cancel. That's all I got for that. Chapter 3. Anything glitchless specific? Um, this is pretty straightforward. If you want to get the speed vault here, you need to delay the kick a little bit. Walt, just do a camera turn wall run and then kick super late. And you can get a speed vault here. I wouldn't recommend going for it in full game runs. You just risk dying unnecessarily. It saves a tiny amount of time. Uh, nothing glitchless specific here, so I will go past that. I'm sure Walrus covered those parts. Um, to get this slide into the vent, I recommend being on the left side. Don't be touching the wall here. Be a little bit further to the left on this orange platform. And I, let's see, where do I slide? I slide, I think I start sliding right about on this yellow bar between the grates. And then you want to do a sidestep right before you get to this yellow bar. And you need to hold left very briefly before you slide just to make sure you have a tiny bit of momentum in this direction. If you don't, then you'll just crouch. But yeah, that's the whole setup. Um, nothing really important in here. Grab the gun, shoot this out twice. Um, there is a climb you can do here. Uh, I'm not gonna cover it though, it's, it's not really that important. The way I do this climb is once I get onto this platform, I don't put myself in the corner here, I'm slightly to the right of the corner, and I do an extended wall climb, and sidestep. And I'm, I'm sort of gradually turning my camera left so I reconnect with the wall, and you need to be far enough to the left to make sure that you actually do reconnect with the wall, otherwise if I'm too far right, I'm not going to get a good wall run after the sidestep, but oil jump at the very top, and then after I do this final uh, climb up here, or sorry, after I after I um, get away guards, after I do the final coil jump onto the ledge, I'm holding left to strafe slightly left. So that way I can immediately climb up. Otherwise, if I don't strafe left here, I'll be positioned more like, you know, like right here or so. Bait does not want to work with me today. I don't know. You probably get what I mean. If, you're, if I'm grabbing a ledge here, there is this collision on my right, which will prevent me from climbing up immediately. So you want to strafe left. So that way you can immediately climb up. And then you do a wall boost here. I don't recommend doing anything else other than just a regular wall boost because uh, you don't have very much room to work with. If you're doing ILs, yeah, you can do a sliding wall climb or whatever, but in full game runs, just do a wall boost here, sliding wall climb, wall boost again, watch the video. And then to jump across here, just delay your jump after getting on the rail very slightly, so you have a little bit more speed and distance, and nothing really for the rest of this checkpoint that's important. 3C. There are two good ways to go through this place, and do whatever makes you feel comfortable. I would say the Probably the easiest way of doing it is to do a double wall boost here. 
I, well, I recommend doing this regardless of how you're going to go through. Double wall boost there. Slide under right here. You can jump on this rail and go across this way and do a sidestep. It's just a little bit more precise and it barely saves time. So the easiest way is to do a wall run and jump over the fence. To get this wall run, you want to start early on the wall. You don't want to jump like right here. I mean, you can, but give yourself as much room as possible. Start the jump right here and then look very far right. Before you jump off the wall, you want to be looking to the right, like 45 degrees. So, yeah. Start looking right immediately after you get the wall run. And then you'll probably need to do a double sidestep to get across that red pipe that's on the ground there. And then you proceed on through the level. The other way to go to this section that is more recent is... Uh, to again, you can slide under here or jump on that vent, whatever floats your boat. And you want to land right about here, jumping from that upper platform. You need to be careful not to hit the fence. Um, sometimes you can hit the fence and not even hit the, the barbed wire. Sometimes you'll hit the barbed wire. But it's, it's a pretty precise jump. You want to be very far forward on that ledge. You can also get stuck behind this ledge like this that's the case, just strafe left for a second and sidestep. And then you're going to do a double wall boost on these walls. You want to get very far forward on this vent. Uh, after doing a sidestep, you pretty much always want to do a sidestep first to make sure you're at max speed. And I am aiming on the wall here, or like the end of this wall toaster. That's where I'm positioning my camera. And then the next boost you do needs to be much harder than the first boost you do. The first boost you want to have at that exact point to land on these platforms. You can actually boost past them, I believe. Um, let me do the whole thing, I guess, in one motion. Yeah. So I almost boosted off of this platform, actually, but yeah. In midair, after doing this boost, turn your camera slightly further left for a harder boost here and coil and then I think that's about it for this section oh yeah if you want to get a coil here onto this building I recommend doing a speed vault oops I recommend doing a speed vault here I don't know why it's not giving me a speed vault like that um, it's better it's it's better it's more convenient it preserves more speed than going to the left here and doing a sidestep. It's like, it's just really awkward having to go to the side and do a sidestep like that, so I recommend just doing a speed vault. Except I keep vaulting over because I don't have enough speed. And then fall off. So the actual best thing to do to get max height, you can get a crazy amount of height on this wall. And the way you do that is you just jump completely straight. Uh, I don't do this, but you can. You can get a lot of height on this wall, like right there. You actually get enough height that I think you hit the checkpoint. Um, but uh, yeah, I recommend just being at the very edge of that platform, waiting and looking into the wall to get the wall boost. If you're not comfortable with it, it's not a big deal. Just grab the ledge and do like a Q-turn cancel. I can't seem to grab the ledge. That works fine. You can do a sliding wall climb wall boost here. I'm not going to go over the details of it. It's, I don't know, more advanced than is necessary, really. It doesn't save that much time. Uh, you can do a sliding wall climb onto this wall toaster. And that is done by waiting until you get past these boxes. Make sure you're aimed at the wall toaster and you're pretty close to this wall to start the sliding wall climb. Looks like this. And then, as with any time you approach a small ledge like this with horizontal momentum, you might want to wait on this platform a little bit so you're not moving side to side before you do your ledge, uh, your wall climb. Alright, 3D. Uh, nothing super important here. 
my advice for this wall climb is don't be at the very edge of the ledge. Do it a little bit before the edge of the ledge and don't be right next to the wall. You don't want to risk getting a wall boost. So. Yeah, just like that. And uh, turn your camera quickly. And then as you're approaching this orange... Uh, blanking on the word. I don't know, canopy. I recommend turning parallel to it. So that way, if you don't make it all the way up to this platform, if you don't clear the platform, you'll at least grab the ledge. So. And then one thing you can do is you can jump. I think you have to jump up here and then you can death abuse and die. That's one option. I haven't actually timed it, but you'll end up respawning like right here. Otherwise, uh, do a wall run and coil over the, the fence. Again, looking to the sides, so you get more height. Otherwise, you can do it on this wall too. You find that easier. And I usually do a wall boost on this pillar. Then the final difficult trick of this chapter. To get a sliding wall climb on this wall, I look just to the right of this pole. I'm positioned, it's not, it's not super precise where you stand here, just give yourself a little bit of room. And, yeah, look, look a little bit to the right of the pole. And I'm going to jump, and again, with, with all these tricks, pretty much, I'm going to turn my camera after I jump. So, jump, turn camera, and, uh, that will give you this, you know, this wall climb like that. And there's a few things you can do with this wall climb. Um, one of them is you can do a sidestep, which I find much more difficult. Let's see if I can do that. So to get that sidestep, you have to like slide out further than you do for the hint climb. So I would recommend actually just doing a hint climb. Uh, whoops. And the reason I recommend it, one of the main reasons, is that the Q-turn kind of pushes you past the ledge a little bit, so you don't need to have as intense of a slide on this wall. It's just much more lenient, and you'll automatically, you know, grab the ledge afterwards. And it's probably faster, too. I, I think it is faster. So really, really everything is uh, in the sliding wall climb, hint climbs corner. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got for that. It's actually not that precise, I don't think. You just gotta, you know, make sure you're looking in the right angle and you don't need to sidestep first or anything and make sure you jump or you, you turn your camera after you jump. Just like that. Chapter 4, 4A. To do fast 4A, uh, I guess I'll start from the very beginning. I do two bunny hops and then I hold left and look to the side here, that way I'm strafing and I'm preserving my speed. So I'll, I'll do that again. This sets up for the jump over the wall really nicely. Because I can like, curve into this uh, camera position very nicely and, and preserve all of my running speed. Then do a wall climb sidestep. If you do it really nicely and you get a good like slide with this wall climb, you can actually clear the fence without taking any damage, but it doesn't really matter, it doesn't save any time or anything. Um, and then I walk forward until I'm past this ledge to do a sidestep. You can do a sidestep like this, and then a sidestep here. I think it's just nicer and cleaner and more consistent to do a sidestep after I get past this ledge, and then do a sidestep again here. And to get past this wall, you want to make sure you don't hit the fence. Obviously, if you touch this fence, you're going to die. And you want to make sure you're at ve uh, very much at max speed, so that's what these two side steps are for. And you're going to jump at the very edge of this ledge. And I would say this is about the angle that I'm trying to jump at. This is, you know, uh, between 5 and 10 degrees looking to the right. And once again, for the hundredth time, not going to be the last time I say it, but you're going to jump, then turn your camera to the right after you've gotten past the fence. And that will initiate the wall run on this wall. So, this is what it'll all look like. 
and then visual cue there's this little box on the wall once you can see that you are underneath it you can do a wall boost by looking into the wall and jumping so that's everything I got on this trick I would say it's it's actually not that bad frankly I, th I think it's easier than doing spider climb personally but everybody has their own preference so uh, anything inside that's important to talk about there's a sliding wall climb here I don't know why I did a hint climb there I don't normally do that you can coil it it's much harder to do a coil than to just vault the ledge though uh, if you don't like doing that I don't know just do like a bat or something I don't know what other people do and then sidestep and slide through the vent. Two things you can do with this vent um, that are both pretty easy. You can do uh, a wall run, Q-turn jump like that. This might be fastest, but I'm not sure. Otherwise, you can do what Hecky does and push yourself up against the, the side and then do a very delayed Q-turn jump coil. Like, much more delay than I did there. Like that. And that will make it so you, like, lose a ton of height, and then the Q-turn jump will sort of arc you over the ledge and push you forward enough, and you won't get stuck on this ledge. So, I would say it's probably the easiest, and it's also pretty fast, so I would recommend doing that. Uh, turn to the right as you fall here so you don't grab the ledge. And then you're going to do a sliding wall climb on this pillar. Um, I would recommend stopping briefly, just like this, to make sure you're not at, at 10,000 miles an hour, kilometers per second. Uh, and make this sliding wall climb a little bit easier. You're gonna do a Q-turn, and you're gonna strafe left in midair uh, as you do the Q-turn jump and coil. And that will get you on top of this ledge. Um, you don't need to do the, the strafe, if you're going to do a wall climb sidestep, if you're going to do a wall climb sidestep vault this ledge, then that's it. You just you just do that. However, the fastest thing is much harder in my opinion, but it is faster, and I would recommend strafing left for it. And it is this thing. You can you can actually speed vault this ledge. I'm really bad at it though, so forgive me for messing this up. And one of the things that makes this really difficult is that there's a cooldown on being able to Q-turn from a ledge. So you have to jump off of this platform to not fall off, then do an extended wall climb by pressing W, and you have to, like, delay the Q-turn very slightly. You can't Q-turn immediately, otherwise you you won't be able to. There's, there's just a cooldown. It won't let you. And if you do it really well, you'll get a vault here. Um, otherwise, you might get a slow vault, which is still faster than doing the sidestep and vaulting this ledge, but... Yeah. Uh, let's see, right here... The options you have in this room are to do what I do. Which is a wall run, quick turn, jump, coil. And when you do this, you're gonna get... You're gonna be able to see on your left this wall. You just want to make sure you're past the wall before you jump. And then in midair, after you coil, I'm going to turn my camera manually to look like in this direction, sort of, at the white wall. And I am going to hold directional keys, which are forward and right. And that will make sure you get, like, smushed into this ledge. And as long as you land on the, the shimmy spot here, you won't take... Uh, you won't go into the hard fall animation. Otherwise, your other options are to simply fall down and roll. It's actually not that slow. Um, you can jump onto this pillar. That's one option. Uh, you can also jump just before this pillar, and I believe the slanted ledge of the pillar will cause you to knock at a hard fall. Um, you might need to kick, I don't remember. No, you'll you'll just immediately... It might be because of the pillar on the ground, or the pillar... Or, uh, wood on the ground, or wood right here, I'm not sure. Uh, another thing you can do... is wall boost... 
onto these lights on the wall. This is very hard. I don't recommend doing this. You can sidestep immediately into the the ledge there. That might be the fastest method. I don't know. It's very this is very fast though. Doing the wall run quick turn jump. So if you don't know which to do, easier with speed, but gosh darn it. Game, don't make me look like an idiot in front of all my fans. It's it's pretty fast to do actually despite my failing pretty consistent uh, you can also do like a kick which isn't very fast I would probably just roll instead of doing that honestly because you can't do a sidestep out of it like you can in inbounds and I think that's all the different methods they're all kind of the same in terms of speed so after that I would say the next relevant section Probably in here. I don't think there's anything in the rope burn areas. Seems Jack Knight was bang on the money about rope burn being behind us. Oops. Wonder who his professional is. I'm boosting your signal. Try and find a way. Uh okay, back. getting over this like fence. You don't want to be completely like parallel, you wanna be like some kind of What angle is this? Twenty degree angle or so? Maybe twenty five degree? And once again, you're going to jump looking, you know, sort of right at this can on the ground. And once you get to the white wall on your right, you are going to turn your camera to the right. Just like that. And not die because I didn't sidestep. Just like that. And then when you get on top of the fence, you're going to sidestep to the right. Um, the fastest thing you can do is look. I guess you can see these different patterns on the wall, like three-ish of the three, three of these uh, lines, sets of lines to the right. That's where you're going to aim when you do the sidestep. And what that will let you do is do a bunny hop up this ledge and wall boost on your right on this on this light on the wall. And then, to get a speed vault wall boost here, you want to look at the very left edge of these lights on the wall. And that will let you get this wall boost. And then do a sidestep immediately to the right. Slide under. Uh, this is actually very important right here. So, in inbounds, and if you're doing, um, well, no, I guess just inbounds, what, what people do is they wait alongside this ledge alongside this gate, I should say, so that the gate is, like, almost fully closed before they walk forward, because there's a trigger next to the button that triggers the train. However, in Glitchless, if you are not doing blue wall, which I do recommend not doing blue wall, you want to immediately go forward and trigger that as fast as possible. So I would just be running forward and triggering it immediately. I usually do a wall boost... Um, on the right here as well. You could maybe see that my game was lagging there. Now the trains are loaded in. And the whole point of that is to get the train to come as early as possible in Glitchless. In, in inbounds, at any percent, you want the trains to come late. In Glitchless, you want them to come early because you're not doing blue wall. You need to wait for the train to get past you before you can proceed. So, if you do it fast, you will usually have a train that's like pretty good and you'll be able to just go immediately. If you get really bad train RNG, you might have to wait briefly. Um, yeah. Uh, this is not glitchless specific, but if you want to do this climb, uh, I recommend jumping a little bit earlier than you probably think you need to, and doing evenly spaced inputs. So just watch my key display. Let's see, jump, Q turn, jump jump, Q, jump. And if you have enough speed, I'm not doing with a lot of speed right now, but... Jump, Q, jump. Should be able to get a speed vault if you're a little bit better than I am. Just like that. Uh, janitor closet. Again, not glitchless specific, but I will go over it. Um, you want to aim on the wall. You can aim anywhere to the right of this white pillar. 
I would recommend aiming on this white pillar, but you can actually start the wall run anywhere between as well. It's just best if you aim, like, sort of right here to start this wall run. So you're going to jump on this platform, and then after, you're going to do an immediate Q-turn jump once you've connected with the wall here, and you're going to yank your camera left so that you get the, the speed vault as quickly as possible and, and get it at the right angle. And uh, this is how you get consistent two trains in Glitchless. It actually matters much more in Glitchless than it does in any percent. With any percent, you have a little bit of leeway, but in Glitchless, you have no leeway at all. You have to, If you're going as fast as possible, you will just barely beat the best, uh, the worst train RNG. You'll see I was yanking my camera left there, and I got right in front of the door. So, that's how you do that. And then, I think the rest of this chapter is pretty much the same as in any percent. So, I will skip the rest of it and move on to chapter 5. 5A, you do death abuse at the very beginning. Then, after you do death abuse, you are going to do this. There's a few different ways across this area, but they all use the same fundamental idea. There is a trigger that extends. You can see this green line. This is the trigger that causes the guards in front of you to start killing you quickly. So you want to go into the trigger and then back out of the trigger. And then it only triggers once, so if you go back into it again, the guards will treat you as, as though you're not uh, to be killed. I mean, they still will shoot at you, but they won't have insane accuracy. So all of these strats, like for example, if you're doing wall climb turn jump like that, you'll notice I went forward, went through the trigger, and then the Q turn jump brought me back out of the trigger, and then now I can proceed. Otherwise, you can do like, you can walk forward like this, and then speed vault cross, then proceed. Um, otherwise, what I do, which I believe is the fastest method, um, is walk forward and then just strafe left, and then a wall boost back through. But, yeah, as long as you're hitting that trigger, leaving the trigger, and then going back through it, uh, you will be fine. Anyways... Again, make sure you don't go too fast here. I only do one sidestep. I don't recommend doing a second sidestep. And then once you get to this wall, you can start going fast again. Alright, 5B. This is pretty difficult section, I would say. 5B gives a lot of people trouble, and for good reason. Um, you can sidestep on this ledge. It's just kind of precise. Doesn't save very much time or anything, but... Uh, let's see, down here... I don't really have anything specific to say about this climb. Uh, let's see... How about this climb? Do I have anything to add? I guess, when you're coiling on this barbed wire, err on the side of looking to the right. Because looking to the left, it really sucks if you fall in here. I guess the first time, it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, having to do the backup by jumping on these little spinning bands or whatever really sucks, so... I would say just practice the hell out of this. You know, I'm aiming pretty far right here. I'm aiming for, like, this pole. Like, just to the right of these fans. Kind of where I'm aiming. Of course, you have to make sure you don't collide with this fence as well. Um, if you actually go far enough, you can grab the, uh, let's see, I didn't even aim far enough right there. You can actually do a wall climb here, which is kind of nice. I don't know that I would recommend it, but it is something you can do. And then to get this sliding wall climb, as with any sliding wall climb that pops you up at the edge, you actually don't need to get the extended sliding wall climb, but you might as well. Uh, you don't want to do it at the very end of the wall, you want to do it slightly before. And you also don't want to be right next to the wall, you want to have a little bit of space between you and the wall. Right there, if you saw, I was too far forward, so I didn't get the extended sliding wall climb. Same with that one. 
You don't, again, you don't need to get the extended slide at wall climb, but it does help. And as long as you're angled well, like, you know, you're looking pretty far to the left here, you're gonna, you're gonna connect with the, with the zip line. Alright, anything for 5C. Um, let's see, you can do one wall boost here, and then to get this jump across the gap, just delay the, the jump after Q-turning so you have enough height, and you'll make it across. Um, something else you can do is do, like, two wall boosts, and then, oh, whoops, I never did this, so I'm not very good at it, but not very hard. You just do a wall boost. A delayed wall boost across this gap. I don't know which one's faster, just they're probably about the same. Do whichever you feel more comfortable with. Uh, nothing really to add here. To get this sliding wall climb, you want to jump right before you get to this black thing on the ground. And you want to aim right here on the right side of this white box. See, that's where I'm aiming, right here. Just like that. And there's another sliding wall climb you can do here. I do not recommend doing that in full game runs, though. So, yeah, don't do it. Alright, that should be it for 5C. 5D. Mall climb. I guess, is there anything in here? No, not really. Mall climb. This is probably the hardest thing as of making this video in the glitchless run. The way I do this is to get through this door and sidestep once, and I stop briefly to kill my speed so that I'm not moving too quickly. I have a little bit more time to react. You don't need to do this. Just whatever makes you uh, feel the most comfortable with it. Um, and I usually put myself right on the right side of this yellow corner, right here. And, um, let's see, I guess I'm, yeah, this is kind of my camera angle. Not super far to the right, but you, you'll notice I am approaching it at an angle. I'm not totally parallel. My camera is a little bit to the left of this line on the wall. And, um, yeah, so... I am jumping sort of right as this rail goes off my screen on the left. I don't use it as a visual cue, but that's just sort of where I jump. Um, and then, for the thousandth time, uh, you need to jump and then turn your camera left. And I'm turning my camera left kind of right as this sign goes off screen. And... Once you turn your camera left, you don't need to do an instant Q-turn jump, but pretty quick, you need to do a Q-turn and then jump. And the whole point of this is you want to be as close to this wall as possible, because when you do a quick turn jump really close to a wall like this, it's going to automatically start a sliding wall climb. And then you do a sidestep to the right, and then I usually strafe left after doing the sidestep to the right, but there's there's a few different ways you can do this. You can... <clears throat> Sorry. One moment, let me get some water. I don't talk this long. So, to, to stand on this ledge, you need to be crouching, and you need to be spamming jump. The only way you can do this is with a free scroll mouse or with a jump macro. And you just crouch along the ledge like this, the way I do it is I'm facing the wall and I'm holding right. And that lets me use the wall as a visual reference. If you prefer, I think it's a little bit faster, but a little bit less consistent to be looking out like this and instead be strafing with your left key and then lining up like this. So up first, my visual cue is right like you can kind of see these two lines I'm slightly to the right of the center of them 
and you don't want to be directly in the center you want to be just a little bit to the right of them and then I stop holding jump and then I stop holding shift in that order after I've stopped moving I do a quick turn to turn myself around and I look at the center of these uh, of this fake potted plant okay and then I'll show you real quick if you're doing it from this direction if you're looking this way you're holding left and then you're stopping kind of right as you get to the left end of this plant like that so it's a bit harder to tell how far left you are when you're looking in this direction but that's where you want to stop and then again let go of jump then let go of shift both after you've stopped moving and then just turn your camera very slightly to the right so you have a little bit of a right angle um, or right facing angle uh, and then from both of these positions now you should be in the same position regardless of how you did it you're going to press forward very briefly you have a very you're, you're standing on a very small edge here you don't have very much room so you got it but you have to press forward briefly before you jump and then jump and then like halfway through the jump arc you're gonna turn your camera right and hold the wall run briefly and then uh, get a wall boost off of it like that so let's just do the whole thing again so I'll do it this direction doesn't really matter let go of jump let go of shift look slightly right just like that do it one more time. Do it with my setup. Just like that. So this is going to take a lot of practice. Um, again, it's very choreographed. It's very, very precise. Uh, but it is also very, very fast. It's only like two to two and a half seconds slower than doing a first try beamer. So it's basically equivalent to a second try beamer. Um, yeah. Honestly, it's a pretty good thing to learn. If you're not very good at Beamer, I would highly recommend trying this because then you'd kind of be killing two birds with one stone here. You, you'd have a very fast any percent strat as well as glitchless strat. Um, there are a few other things that might happen. So let's cover some, some things that might happen if you're messing things up. Um, if you're doing this... Uh, not that, sorry. If you find... Come on, let me mess up. I'm trying to mess up. If you're falling backwards like this, that means you're not connecting with the wall. You might be Q-turning too early. It might just be that your setup isn't even allowing you to get a wall run. Uh, maybe you're just like too far right or something. Uh, maybe you're too far left. Uh, probably not too far left, but you're probably Q-turning too quickly if I had to guess. And you know, it, it can be... You can sort of feel pressured to Q-turn quickly, but you just gotta make sure you get the wall run first. And then, uh, maybe you're not getting up into the corner. Um, just hold the wall climb a bit longer. If you do all this correctly, you should be able to hold the wall climb. Oh, there we go. See, I did it too early. If you do all it correctly, you should be able to hold the wall climb pretty far. Oh, you know, uh, another thing that can happen is if you get the wall run which is Q-turn, and uh, you're, like, past the wall. Like, you, you could be too close to the wall, too. That's that's another thing. I, I just really recommend getting this initial setup down, uh, making sure you, you know, have it very consistent. Anyways, uh, you know, you, I'm, I even messed this up quite a bit, so... Uh, but, yeah, you should be able to wall climb pretty high, then do a sidestep into the corner. Uh, if you're not getting into the corner, you're probably just not wall climbing high enough. And uh, one of the last things that can really mess you up is uh, you can do a few things to fail this final jump. Um, you know, if you're not even getting a jump, you're probably holding W too long. So, yeah, you just got to really very briefly hold W on this ledge. Um, you can also grab this ledge. Can I do it? Maybe I need to use trainer for this. Gosh darn it. I don't know. Anyways, 
you know what it looks like. If you grab this ledge and you're hanging from the ledge, you will have failed it. You need to fall back down. There's no way to climb up. So that's why doing this wall boost is necessary. You can speed vault it, actually, but it's really hard, and I don't recommend it. Um, I guess a little bit more on this final wall boost that you do. You need to just hold it very briefly and, and jump off. You can't hold it very long, but you can't do an instant boost either. It's all about just getting a tiny bit of uh, extra distance off of it. So anyways, that's about all I got for that trick. Hope it helps. Uh, is there anything else in this chapter? Nothing glitchless specific, so... We'll move on to chapter 6. 6A. 6A is pretty tough. I, I struggled quite a bit to find a good setup for this. The best thing that I have found that I'm comfortable doing is to do a speed vault right here. And the way this works is you sort of vault at an angle like this. Like that. And, you know, you're, you're just barely looking to the right of the corner. <clears throat> and normally you won't be able to just stand on the ledge there. You will fall down, but it'll take a second before you fall down. And from here, you can do a wall climb, uh, sidestep, and hit the checkpoint. Just like that. You don't need to actually grab the pole to hit the checkpoint. Um, other things you can do, of course, you can just vault, do a wall climb, extended wall climb sidestep to grab the pole. That's definitely the most consistent. So if you struggle with 6A like I do, you might want to consider just doing this. It's not that much slower. Um, otherwise, you can vault and then back up into the corner like this and get on top of the doorway. It's another way you can do it. Uh, you can do something I used to do, which is wall boost next to the door like this and stand on the, the, uh, the corner of the rail and the door and then do an extended wall climb afterwards very hard to do like that the problem is though that sometimes you bonk your head and I think this has to do with the extended wall climb timing how quickly you do it I think you need to do a very slow extended wall climb could be wrong something like that I don't know I don't recommend doing it, frankly. Otherwise, a very simple way to do this all is just run up the stairs and grab the pole, but yeah. I would say either do this speed vault strat where you jump on top of the rail like that and do a wall climb sidestep, or do an extended wall climb like that. One of the two. And then jumping on top of these rails. I know a lot of people struggle with this. Some people do it from a running start, which is super spooky. Uh, I do not recommend doing that. Uh, some people jump on top of this, which is fine, but I recommend stopping and then jumping on top of the rail like this. And the, the reason I would suggest this is if you are coming from a running start or you're jumping on top of this oil barrel first, you're gonna be not next to the door. You're gonna be like away from the door uh, in this direction which means you're gonna have horizontal momentum as you land on the door, which means you are risking falling off of the door and not getting a wall climb. The nice thing about doing this, landing on this rail and then turning your camera, is that you're not gonna have any horizontal momentum. And you're just gonna be looking straight and get a wall climb every time. Um, you gotta make sure you actually land on this rail, so like look you know, halfway next to this pillar and this pillar right here, these two and then coil, and you can do a little bit of air strafing to make sure you get far enough left. Notice I'm like tapping left as I do this. And then just hold forward once you get on top of the rail. But yeah, a lot of this comes down to being comfortable with how long you can stand on a rail before falling off. And uh, having that timing down really helps you don't need to do an ex uh, a sidestep at the top of this if you find that too risky. Um, you could just climb up, otherwise you could do... I think you can do like a Q-turn cancel, like that. That's probably very similarly fast. Um, and then, a very risky thing you can do is to do this wall run, 
Got to make sure you have a little bit of speed. Oops. <laughs> no, don't sidestep. That's a bad idea. Just like that. You got to really make sure you aim at the edge of the wall when you do it. Um, otherwise, you are not going to get a wall run. Uh, it is fast, but I would recommend personally just jumping over like this. Doing a sidestep boost, it's pretty fast. And you're not gonna die, so. And then here, I believe there's two ways you can do this. I think you can just do a wall run Q-turn jump like that. Like right at the edge of the wall. That seems more difficult almost to me than doing what I do. But some people prefer this, so. Thought I'd mention it. You just, you risk running past the wall, so. Just keep that in mind. What I do is I bunny hop up the stairs. I don't coil. When I jump on top of this uh, rail, I just do a regular jump. And then I land on it for a brief moment, just a tiny moment, to get my direction to change, to get my momentum to change as I look left towards this door. If you jump immediately off of the rail, um, it doesn't matter how far you'll, you turn left, you're going to end up falling down here. So, yeah, again, this just comes down to being comfortable with how long you can land on a rail. Right here, um, you want to pretty much jump at the top of the staircase, maybe like one step down. Aim at the left end of this pole, not too far left, you don't want to get a reverse wall run, but... Whoops, I kicked too late. Where am I? Too far up. There we go. Normally I have a little bit more speed than this too, but... Because you're gonna like, kind of stagger through this door. That was too high up. Whoops. It's always hard to do this without coming through the door. I swear, it's not that hard. Leave me, please. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> um, the, the best way to practice this, really, uh, I guess you could use... Let's use the multiplayer mod. Let's load all that stuff behind us. There we go. Perfect. Just like that. Once again, one of the 10,000 reasons you should use the multiplayer mod. And you can wall run pretty long across this ledge, uh, or across this wall. You don't want to touch uh, the falling platform like I just did there, but you know you can you can wall run for a half second before you fall off. All right, uh, let's see, yellow room. So the way you do this room is you vault this ledge at an angle like this. Make sure you're not getting a springboard. You can also do the springboard, by the way. It's it's pretty fast. You don't need to wait for the steam. You just go straight through the steam. It won't kill you. Um, vault this ledge and then just fall down. And when you do that with speed, you will land on the next platform, which is this pipe. So do that, and then you just jump with spacebar. Don't do a scroll wheel jump. Just spacebar jump. So again, jump. Oops. Whoopsie. Jump, and then you don't want to go all the way to the end of this wall, but like right about to, you know, here or so is where you want to jump. Just look to the right and jump. And then you can either sidestep left into the corner and do a neutral kick, or you can do... You can do a wall run kick. Um, I prefer to just do a sidestep. Just like that. Simple as that. Alright. Don't think anything else here is necessary to explain. It's all the same as any percent. Uh, checkpoint D is the same. Checkpoint E... Uh, yeah, there's one thing at the end here. Most of this is the same. 
Um, but right here, there's two things you can do that are pretty fast. Oh, well, there's a lot of things you can do that are like... Everything here is kind of the same in terms of speed, but... The fastest thing you can do is just jump here and then immediately grab the, the uh, zip line. It's kind of spooky, though. So it can be better to press yourself up against the wall very slightly with a slight angle. You don't want to be looking too far into the wall. But just enough that you're pressed up against the wall so you can do an instant uh, jump kick. And that will send you out and you'll land on this platform right here. Otherwise, you can just jump. But it's a little bit slower, you're going to lose more speed. So, do a jump kick and then jump to this corner right here. Be careful of this pipe though, this pipe can really mess you up. Um, it's got collision that like sticks out here and here as well, so you can get stuck if you uh, are like walking up to get onto the zip line. So yeah, do a jump kick and jump and then jump. That's not too bad. Pretty fast, so. Alright, boat. Boat, boat, boat. I usually strafe very slightly right at the beginning of this uh, chapter. It gives me time to line up my camera angle, and it also pushes me further away from these things on the wall, so I'm not likely to collide with them when I jump. And then I jump, and then just do a kick. It's not very precise, it's actually quite easy. And then here, just in case you don't know, the timing for pressing reaction time is immediately after Merc says fight. It's the last word he says. You want to push reaction time after, like, immediately after he says the word. Right there. And then now, the boat will be very fast. Or the, the truck ride will be very fast. 7B. Um, you'll notice, sorry, when, when this checkpoint pops up, there'll be a checkpoint icon in your bottom left. I like to be in the back left of this truck and wait for the checkpoint to pop up, and then I wait a half second and then walk forward. If you walk forward too fast, the doors won't open. And then you have to, like, walk back again and walk forward again. But I fall out of this truck, look left, coil on top of these cars, sidestep, and you want to do a wall run on the right side of this wall, not so far right that you're like on this stuff. You don't want to do it like on this wall, but like just to the left of that, like right here. And if you do it right there, you'll go up over the ledge. You'll notice the collision here. You can see it's not solid right there, but it is solid everywhere else. Otherwise, if you don't like doing that, you can just climb and coil. That's fine too. Nothing wrong with that. But if you do it this way, wall climb, sidestep, and then I hold forward and right. Now sometimes, you'll get a wall run. Depends on your camera angle. If you get a wall run, don't press anything. Don't do anything. Just just hold your directional keys. And if you get a... If you get a I, I should rephrase, actually. If you get a wall run, um, you can let go of all the directional keys. That's fine, too, I think. Oh, there we go. Alright, well, holding forward and right works, so I guess... Kind of updating this as I go. Just hold forward and right. And, uh, you'll get into this corner. However, you don't actually want to be in this corner completely. You want to be a little bit to the right of the corner. And do a wall climb sidestep like that. Um, make sure you're not angled. Got the trainer so fast. Make sure you're not angled out like this when you do it, because you might not be pushed up into the wall enough. If anything, you want to be angled a little bit to the right, like this. Kind of hard to stand on this ledge. We angle a little bit to the right like this when you do the wall climb sidestep. Make sure you get pushed into the wall, and, and that will make sure of that, because if you look at the checkpoint, um, you'll notice it goes all along this wall, everywhere to the left here. You actually can just touch the wall here and you'll hit the checkpoint but it's much safer to do the sidestep and then you'll sidestep down and die to a guard that's right here
uh, to die to the guard, by the way, you'd walk up to him, let him melee you once, and then stand still, and he'll shoot you to death. And that's the fastest way to die to him. Right here, um, I guess we'll start right here. I like to do a sidestep wall boost. It's very consistent. And then I do a coil, or a, a speed vault over that ledge. And to get this wall climb, I tend to look right here on the middle of this uh, pipe, walk up, and I turn my camera slightly to the right, so I'm like, you'll notice I'm like 15 degrees off uh, from looking completely in this direction. And then I, I will turn after I jump to face completely 90 degrees this way. So it'll be like this, just like that. And then you want to Q-turn immediately and delay the jump a little bit. So you coil on top of this ledge. Um, as In terms of left to right positioning, you want to just be able to see this vent on your left. Um, you don't want to be right next to it, but like right here is something like this is pretty good. And then you want to do an extended wall climb, very early quick turn and delay the jump a lot. And then slowly drag your camera to the right after you jump. And that will cause you to grab the ledge. I didn't get a fast climb there. Sometimes you won't. Depends on a lot of different things, but at the very least you'll grab the ledge. There, I got a fast climb. Usually it's because you're looking too far to the right. Or maybe you're positioned too far to the right. Um, but yeah. Dragging your camera to the right as you do the quick turn jump tends to be the best way to grab the yeah. ledge quickly. This climb, not gonna lie, this climb kind of sucks. Here's a backup. So, if you don't like doing the, um, the fast climb, you can always do that. And you just sidestep up to the top. But, this is the fastest method, it's what I do. Um, I start my wall run. Uh, I think, let me, let me look at it again. I think I'm starting at, like, right on the end of this grate, or maybe even one, one box forward. Just like that. And I let go of all my directional keys. Oh, sorry. First, what I do is I, after the wall climb sidestep, I'm holding forward and right to air strafe a little bit. And then once I land on this platform, I let go of all the directional keys, look... Uh, at this wall and then do an extended wall climb and to get this speed vault this is important you <coughs> excuse me you need to very slightly turn your camera to the right as you're after you've done the side step if you do it too hard you won't get the wall run so I'm just like very slowly pitching my camera to the right and I'll show you that right here just like that. Just barely turning my camera to the right. That's all you need to get the wall run and get a wall boost up here. And then once you do that, uh, you just do a sidestep sliding, uh, wall climb, sidestep, uh, grab the ledge. Instead of grabbing a ledge, another thing you can do is coil onto this platform. It's kind of scary, so don't recommend doing it in full game runs, but is an option. I'm also not very good at it, so let's just move on. Uh, what else? Anything here? Nothing really in this section. Go to Celeste. Um, okay. So maybe in the future, future generations, people will do the boat deck quickly and, like, go across the center of it, but... Us noobs back in 2022 did not do that, so. Time to get some answers. Excuse me, just taking another drink. Uh, do a slow boost right there. You know, you, you start the wall run and you don't jump immediately. You just delay it very slightly, and that will get you over the green pipe. Do a wall run on the very edge of that wall. Devault up here. Now, this is important. Depending on how much speed you have when you vault up onto this ledge will determine what you do right here. So if you're, if you've retained all of your speed, so right there, I kind of got a slow vault there. It didn't, I was moving quite slowly after the speed vault. 
right there again. I was moving pretty slowly. See if I can get a fast one to show what it looks like. Probably won't be able to, but that was a slow vault. Slow vault. Uh, let me let me come from back here to see if I can show it off. There we go. So now I'm moving really fast. Okay. That one, I was really fast. So depending on if you're moving fast or slow after you do the speed vault, I'm going to change what you do next. So first, let's show... Alright, slow vault. If I do a slow vault, I'm not going to be moving very quickly here. Either way, I'm going to vault that ledge, okay? And I'm going to immediately jump after I vault the ledge. And just scroll it or however you want to do it. And coil onto this rail. Now, if I'm moving slowly, I need to not jump off of the rail right away. I need to, like, stagger on the rail for a moment to get a little bit farther forward, so that way I land on this light after I jump and coil off. If I'm moving quickly, I need to vault onto or jump onto this rail and immediately jump off onto the light. So, hopefully that made sense. Uh, let's see. Let me do one. Moving slowly stand on the ledge for like a brief moment do that one more time should be a slow vault Oops. yeah so I just stood on that rail for a brief moment Let's see if I can do a fast one from back here nope that was slow was also slow. There we go. Now it's fast. I gotta jump immediately after I jump on the rail. So, hopefully that illustrated the difference. Um, and then here, you can just walk across these even though there's a gap between them. I think you'll fall in. Yeah, you'll fall in if you don't move, but as long as you're moving forward, you can just jump across and coil onto the outer section here. The fastest way to kill Celeste is to run along and get her get her between you and the rail oh god she kind of jump scared me there um so she'll be standing like pretty close to the rail here and you just want to walk around so you're walk around 90 degrees to her side and then do two punches crouch punch two punches so you can actually do it in four or sorry five punches like that um her gun won't turn red, but you can do it in five. If you hit her six times, her gun will turn red, but as long as you disarm after the fifth punch, you can still take her out. So, um, let me reset this checkpoint so she's in a good spot. Stay in cover and Very slow walk. Time to get some answers. Oops. Didn't go far enough to the side there, so... That's my bad. Alright, now she's in a good spot. Two punches. Get her between you and the rail. And then crouch punch, two more punches. And it should look exactly like this. Now when you're in this position, you can either stand up normally, or you can do a backwards roll. Which gets you a little bit closer. However, you will get a uh, camera lock on Celeste. You'll get like the AI camera lock. It's not really a big deal, it actually doesn't... It's not the worst camera lock in the world, but something to note. Uh, oh, I should also mention, the reason you put Celeste between you and the rail is because she won't move, and also she won't roll away. So, yeah. Uh, anything in this section... I don't think there's anything notable about this, and then the last Celeste fight is exactly the same. Um, except instead of putting Celeste between you and the rail, you are going to be vaulting right here, putting her between you and the ledge of this container. Just like that. Chapter 8. Kate. 8. Great. Organizing a rifle drop. Kumquat. I don't know what rhymes with 8. Uh, don't do this sidestep at the beginning of the chapter. It is a trap for bad players. Uh, this jump right here is a little bit tricky. The way I recommend doing it is... 
doing a sidestep here, boosting very early on this wall. You want to boost like at the very beginning so you don't get stuck on anything. That will make sure you have enough speed. And you are also running along the left edge here. You don't want to run along the right edge because you're going to have a lot less room to make this jump. You're going to end up wall running pretty much. So don't recommend that. Uh, but this boost is nice, keeps you at max speed, and gives you more room. Uh, I kind of just YOLO it at this point in my life, but if you want, you know, you, you want to get to the edge of the building, make sure you're looking at the corner of the building. Um, you could also use a visual cue, like this line on the wall, because you're going to be able to see this wall before you can see the corner of the building. Something you can use if you want. You want a visual cue for stuff. Oh, I have health on. Whoops. Anyways, yeah. You also can do this with a kick. Um, if you are want to get fancy about it. But I would recommend just jumping. Otherwise, you don't have to do the wall boost, you know. If you if you find you're still getting stuck on stuff, you know, you could just um do a sidestep here, or maybe a sidestep like right here, and then make sure you're coming from the left side of that little alley. A lot of, lot of trial and error goes into figuring that out. 8B. Quite a difficult and intimidating checkpoint very late in the game. The simplest thing to do at the beginning here is just jump. Okay, let's get some visual cues for this. You want to jump pretty much right after you get past this corner uh, of stuff on the ground. And I like to look at the corner of this building in the distance. Not, it's not really very precise. See right there, I was looking to the right. You know, it, does, it doesn't really even matter that much. You're gonna, you're gonna hit this and roll. Um, otherwise, you can do the kick right here. This is technically fastest because you can avoid a roll. And if you do it like that, where you get really a really nice position, and right here you can immediately go into a quick turn, uh, hint climb. But a lot of the time, what will happen is you need to turn around and do a neutral kick, which really isn't any faster than doing a roll, so that's what happens most of the time. I just not worth it. But you're going to do a sidestep, hint climb, make sure to delay it more than you think you need to. And this whole area here is, you know, it's kind of important to have a good setup for it. So you want to do the hint climb pretty far to the left here just to the right of the door. Hint climb. And then I am going to be holding left and forward at the same time after I do the vault. And that will let me line up, you know, just to the left of this collision sticking out of the ground, sort of just lined up with this metal bar. Just like that, okay? And I'm gonna be holding forward the whole time and, you know, some people, this is something I did, too, before. I would I would stop here and line myself up and, like, you know, kind of sidestep like that. I think it's better if you're looking forward when you do the sidestep so you can see where you're going. If you're looking to the side here, I think it's harder to get a good sidestep. Um, it's totally preference, but that's just how I like to do it. Um, oh, also, you can, you actually don't need to hold forward the whole time. You can just hold left if you want, and line yourself up, and then do a sidestep. Um, yeah, but I, I like to hold forward the whole time as I'm doing all that motion. Just make sure I have the most forward momentum as possible, the most speed. And then I'm going to do the sidestep. Um, it's not recommended to do the sidestep from a standstill again, unless you're coming all the way back. You want to have as much speed as possible. You're going to jump. The jump timing isn't super important. Um, but I'll show you, I guess, roughly where I jump. Sort of like that. Okay, so you get an idea of where I'm jumping. I'm not, I, I don't have a visual cue for where I jump. I just kind of know how far away I want to be from this pole. But what is important is the angle of the wall boost. So, as with many things, you want to be pretty much parallel with this wall, sort of like this, maybe looking slightly left, like between 0 and 5 degrees left. 
And when you jump, you're going to turn your camera after you jump. You're going to look at the left side of this billboard. That's the camera angle you want. Now, it still is pretty precise because you don't have a whole lot of time to turn your camera for this. But that's where I'm looking. And it's important because, you know, if you, if you don't boost hard enough, you're not going to clear the barbed wire. And if you boost too hard, you're going to fall off this building to the left. So, definitely recommend using that as a visual cue. It helps immensely. Alright, moving on. Um, make sure you're not jumping, like, right as you jump up onto this corner of this building, because you'll get stuck sometimes and you won't make it. Um, I jump very late. You can also... Oops. You can also jump early, just coil, but either way, make sure... You can also, like, run along to the left here, like that, to make sure you're up on the ledge and you're not going to get killed by any sort of ledge jank. Do a sidestep, and I jump right at the corner of this platform, and do a wall boost right before I get to the red pole. Just like that. And then I turn my camera left a bit, after I coil, and you can do an immediate wall boost when you land. If you want. Um, that's probably the most consistent thing, but it's not the fastest. Uh, oh, another thing you can do is you can just fall down right here. Uh, what I do, though, I, I shouldn't have said the first thing is the most consistent. This way is pretty consistent, too. Just wait, and then get to the edge of the building and do a wall boost. And then for this, the safest thing to do is to go into this corner. Because that way you avoid all the collision on the ground there, and you give yourself enough room to do a sidestep. Okay. You can do death abuse. To do the death abuse, you make sure you land on the shaded part of this platform. You don't want to land on the edge. Um, otherwise, you can jump on this platform. Um, you can do what I do, which is wall run for a long time and kick. And if you are if you did it nice, you'll actually land on this bottom part of this platform, and you won't have to roll, and it will also line you up for the door really nice. Uh, another thing you can do is sidestep here and you won't need to roll and then you can do the door uh i don't know what you call it but you, you avoid the roll animation by kicking out the door gotta make sure you don't hit the light though or the the camera i'm not very good at this because i never do it but jump a little bit early i guess <clears throat> I don't know. It's not my recommended method. I would recommend um, just doing like a double roll. You could also roll off the edge of this building if you want. To get a single roll, that's fine. But, yeah. Just doing a kick is pretty consistent, or death abuse, or single roll, whatever. They're, they're all kind of the same speed, so. Atrium. Uh, I'm not going to talk about anything in Atrium because it's basically the same as any percent, so there's a lot of things you could go over, but I just don't want to... Alright, this video is already 10 billion years long, so... Uh... The only thing I'll mention is quit out when you're in the vents going into the sniper area. It's faster than not quitting out, so... It's also faster than the reaction time skip. There's nothing really to say about the line up here or the last part of the checkpoint, so... I'll just move on. Um, chapter 9, checkpoint A. There is nothing glitchless specific about 9A, so let's go on to 9B. Um, here, I do two bunny hops and a sidestep and a wall boost. If you do exactly that, like I just did, you will not die to the guards. I have never died to the guards in a run, so just go fast and do two bunny hop, sidestep, wall boost. Make sure you don't get stuck on the glass or anything. Um, yeah. And then here, you do exactly the same as any percent. Hit that button. And then, there's quite a bit to talk about here. 
The main way you do this skip is you're going to have a timer, assuming you have a second monitor or you're playing in windowed mode. You have a timer uh, that you look at, and when the timer stops for load removing, that's when you hit reaction time, and then you're going to um, press tab, and then you're going to tab until the timer starts again, I believe, is the way you do it. I actually don't do it that method, so maybe don't quote me on that, but the way I do it is I look, you're going to see in front of me, there's going to be a light flash from the top of the screen going to the bottom of the screen, like from the top of the door in front of me. So it'll like, yeah, move from the top to the bottom, you'll see this. Right there. So when I see that light, I know to hit reaction time. And I count to seven after that. I know this is kind of like a scuffed method, but if you don't have a um, a timer to look at, you need to be able to time it yourself. So I count to seven, and then after seven, uh, I don't know what exactly I'm counting, roughly seven seconds, it's probably not exactly seconds, but after I hit reaction time, I'll count to seven, and then I will hit tab, and... Um, count to seven again, and then I will let go of tab. Uh, I believe if you hit reaction time late enough, you actually don't even need to tab, but I'm not super confident on the timing of that, so I would recommend practicing this, making sure that you have whatever setup you want to use, make sure you have it down. You know, if you don't have a second monitor or you don't, and you don't play in windowed, make sure you're able to, you know, count it out yourself to and maybe use a metronome or a stopwatch or, you know, however you want to do it. So that's how I do that. Um, this section, when you fall onto this uh, uh, pole here, slide off the corner and uh, you want to let go of W, actually. I, I shouldn't have been holding W there. Let go of W for, like, halfway through the fall. And then press W again after looking uh, towards the pole. And you want to hold shift so that you fall off the pole immediately. Like that. And then you want to turn around and uh, roll off the ledge and, like, tap W forward, whatever your forward key is so that you're at the very edge of the ledge right here, and roll off. If you don't roll off the very edge, it's okay, but that means you're going to get a hard landing, so you need to roll. Um, this is what it would look like. Just like that, I didn't get a hard landing, because I tapped W after falling off this pole, uh, after hitting shift. And then here, to climb this ladder quickly, press yourself up against the, the edge here. Don't do an extended wall climb. Just get up to the top. Then Q-turn and delay jumping afterwards briefly. And that will let you climb up quickly. You can coil over this, but it's very hard, so... I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, when you do this wall climb here, make sure you're not too far to the side. Make sure you're more like right here. If you're too far to the side and you try to coil into the, the vent, you risk bonking. So, do that. Get all the way forward in the pole grab animation before jumping and coiling. Otherwise, you can just vault the ledge too if you're afraid to, to not make it. That's fine. Two good ways of doing this room that I recommend. You can jump. Either way, you're gonna jump right at this line on the wall. After doing a sidestep, you can jump there, and then this light on the wall will be your cue to angle right here towards this edge of this pole and jump. It's not that precise, these are just the, the points that you could use as reference if you wanted to. And then you can just hold forward and jump and you'll get a bunch of height after uh, going on the wall. Otherwise, a slightly faster variation is to do a very slightly delayed wall boost. Just like that. And this will let you grab the pole from the other side and basically do the exact opposite. Get a bunch of height, wall climb, and land on this ledge. 
Either way is fine, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, sliding into this, uh, the vent here, you want to do a sidestep pretty much immediately. I don't know if you need to do it exactly immediately. You can strafe left for a quarter second. And then sidestep, wall boost, and then make sure you turn your camera back straight so you get the vault. If you don't turn your camera straight, you're going to get a slow, like, ledge climb animation. Just like that. And, uh, extended wall climb here. Make sure you do, like, a really good, clean, extended wall climb, otherwise you'll get a slow climb here, or you might not even make it all the way up to the ledge. That, that wall is really weird. Then, snipers. Sniper section. Sidestep. Wall boost. Wall run here, and then make sure you look left before you jump off of the wall to make it onto this platform, and then do a sidestep down to this lower platform. Again, wall run and look left. Um, so this is kind of important. Oh, I sh uh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. You're going to want to roll so that you roll into this wall here. You don't want to roll to the left of the wall because the sniper will hit you again, and you don't want to take that much damage. So just roll into this wall, and then once you're done with the roll animation, just back up and hold left to get around the corner. Getting over the fence. And then finally, uh, it is possible to get hit by this fence when you jump over it. If that's the case, you've taken too much damage, and you need to not do this sliding wall climb. You need to instead do a wall run, turn jump, and uh, get over the fence this way. Uh, I recommend spamming jump to sidestep off the fence, just in case you don't get over the fence completely. But yeah, and then you can either go to the right side or to the left side, it shouldn't really matter at that point. You might want to go to the right side just to be safe, because you've taken a lot of damage. Um, but if you haven't taken a lot of damage, if you haven't gotten hit by this fence, which usually you don't, go away. Um, you want to wait for this guard that's up here to shoot you and then do a wall climb sidestep. Now, sometimes it can happen really late, so you gotta be aware and react quickly and get over this. If they shoot you while you're in the wall climb animation, you risk um, falling off the, uh, the wall and not being able to do a sidestep. Kinda depends on how much damage you've taken, but yeah, just make sure you get sh shot by the guard and then do the sidestep. And then do the, the wall climb, I should say. Here, you can either coil up to this ledge or not. Um, if you want to be safe, you can just climb up here and bunny hop across that. It's pretty fast. It's only about one-ish seconds slower, probably. I haven't timed it. There are a bunch of things you can do here. You can do what people used to do, which is jump onto this platform. Oops. Don't vault that way. not very practiced at this. Let go of W for a second, and then turn your camera so you're angled correctly, and then press W again. Vault over it. If you do it well, you'll actually land on this platform, which is pretty fast. Otherwise, what I like to do is go on this side, um, sort of approach at like a 15 degree angle or so, and jump and then turn my camera left right as I get to the blue wall here. Again, turning your camera after you jump. Um, but I'm not looking completely parallel. You can do it pretty parallel, but you might as well have like a 15 degree angle looking towards it. You can do it on this side as well, but there's really no benefit because the whole point of doing it on this side is so you land on the box in front of you. Like that. It's difficult though because you need to turn your camera left and then you need to turn your camera right again before you jump off this uh, tiny little wall. Some other things you can do are this, which is um, like jumping on the wall and then looking 90 degrees to your right when you jump off of it. Kind of kind of weird. It's actually not that hard, which is kind of weird. And then you can like sidestep off of it. So yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but instead of turning your camera all the way to the right, you're just turning your camera further towards the, the pole. 
just like that. I think it's also possible to like uh, vault over it or something. I don't know. Those would be the only three things that I recommend doing in this area. Um, either the box jump here, the wall run camera turn here, or the uh, ledge grab onto the pole here. And again, if you find all those too difficult, it's not a big time loss to just climb up this and bunny hop across the pole. Um, there's going to be a guard up here. If you saw the guard walking down the stairway as you came up here, or he's already down here, then you can just climb up and sidestep to the door. However, if you did not see the guard walking down the, the stairwell, which usually happens if you go fast, you want to make sure that you look left so you don't get a camera lock, because the guard's going to be like right here, and then do a like a 90 degree sidestep and then another 90 degree sidestep to get around the guard. Otherwise, you risk getting a camera lock, which really sucks. And that is almost it. One more room. Checkpoint F. Look around. I'm gonna do a sidestep, jump across. Um, you kind of want to approach from the right here. If you approach too far to the left, you risk sliding along this slide here. So I would approach from a little bit from the right. Yeah, I actually just slid right there. Um, yeah, just like that. And then fall down under this platform, boil, and make sure you speed vault this. Just some ancient wisdom right there. If you don't speed vault, you risk dying. You probably will die. There'll be a guard here. The simplest thing to do is just disarm the guard, but it's a little bit faster to kill the guard manually. And to do that, you need to do a slide kick, and then punch, punch, crouch, punch, punch. You can't do a regular punch, I think, to start the, the damage chain. You need to do a slide kick for whatever reason. And then grab the gun. I recommend killing this server, then this server. You want to kill this server first, because that's the direction you're going to be looking. Um, I think you could probably come from the other side, but nobody ever does. Not sure why. Uh, but anyways, if you're looking in this direction, kill this server, then this server. This one should be killed already. You can tell by the voice line, there's, there's like a radio that plays overhead. It'll say that the server is offline, so you know you don't need to kill this. And then usually just go and kill this server. It also tends to be the case, when you're doing this initial setup, if you jump and then sidestep left like that, they're much more likely to kill this server, because sidestepping makes them more accurate. So, yeah. They're more likely to shoot in your general direction. But yeah, I think that's it. And then of course at the very end, make sure to not go too fast on the helipad. But uh, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. Um, I know it's super scuffed, very impromptu, but hopefully I uh, covered everything. So have the happy glitchless running um, play the category, it's good. And um, might as well give it a try if you haven't. It's a, it's a skill set that probably Im improves your general gameplay, so. I don't know. I don't have any grand speech. Just play some Mirror's Edge or something. Goodbye.